cover thing is on. How's that? Ish? Better ish? All right. So, first thing we're going to do is talk about the six steps of the scientific method. We'll actually spend some time um, studying these in depth, and we'll also do a set of notes on this. But real quickly, I want to just briefly review with you what the six steps are. Which is notes, which is kind of good. Okay. So the first step is to identify the problem. What are the little words under that say? Vivian? Good. Ask question. Okay, so I went ahead and filled in the answer for you. There's three parts to this lab, that's why there's three pages, and each part is answering a different question. The first thing we're trying to answer is, how does evaporation form? Okay, what's the second part? Form a what, everyone? Good. If I do this, then this will happen because of this. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and write your own hypothesis in the blank. How does evaporation form? Okay, well, if I do this, then evaporation will form because this. Okay, that's all you're going to write in the blank. My hypothesis is if I do whatever you think you should do to form evaporation, then this will happen. Evaporation will form because this is happening. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead and fill that in on your own. Gary? Are you Am I what? Are you are you being raised part of the Correct. Mm -hmm. Hannah? Do you remember our lesson on evaporation? With the water cycle? Okay. So how does evaporation form? <laughs> then how are we going to do that? How can we form evaporation? By heating up. So you would say something like, my hypothesis is, if I heat up the water, then evaporation will form because whatever you think will happen. Okay. All right. Then the next step, you can still be writing, that's okay. I'm just going to move on for the sake of time. Variables. So, number three, identify variables. What does this little part under here say, Johnny? What am I going to change with test in the Good. So as I experiment, I will be changing, I'm going to be changing up here, the temperature of the water. That's what we're going to change. We're going to heat up the water and see if we can make evaporation happen. Okay. What I will keep the same is the amount of water that I'm using. Actually, the amount and the type of water. Okay? I'm not going to have one cup of water and then heat up a different cup of water. Right? I'm going to keep the same substance, the same water. Otherwise, I may have skewed, what's called skewed results. Right? I can't really test something if I'm changing it all the time. I need to have the same water that I was looking at before, heat that up, and then see the evaporation is forming. Yes? Okay. So, number four is create a procedure. These are going to be your directions for the experiment, okay? It should list your materials as well as a step-by-step -step instructions of how to perform the experiment, okay? So, the materials we're going to use, a pot of water, a hot plate, and a thermometer, okay? So, here's my pot of water. It's also, this is also a hot plate in itself, okay? It heats the water, kind of like a tea kettle on your stove, all right? So I've plugged it in, it's now getting warmer. That's what we're doing here, okay? What we need to do, though, is measure the temperature of the water, all right? So I'm gonna do this first one, and then I'll have someone come up and do them for the next parts, okay? 
So here's our room temperature water. I got this water from the same place that I got the water in here. Okay? This is already heating up, so we're going to measure the room temperature water first. Are you following? Okay. So I'm sticking this in here. I'm going to leave it for a minute. All right, I'm watching this red line. You can't really see it. Okay. But it's going up a little bit to about 27 degrees Celsius. So if you flip to the next page, okay, so if we're doing step one, measure the temperature of the water. Okay. If you flip to the next page, it says, what is the temperature of the water before heating? That is where I want you to write 27 degrees Celsius. So on letter B, it was 27 degrees Celsius. Anna? Correct. We got three parts of this experiment we're going to do. So we're on that second page. So flip the first one. We're on the back of the first page, I'm sorry. That's the third page. So this is the first page. We are right here. Okay. You should. All right, so we're doing we're performing step two right now. Okay, so if you were to flip back and look at step two, heat a pot of boiling water. That's this. Yes? Okay. Step three, watch as evaporation happens in steam forms. Then we're going to measure the temperature of the boiling water. And then we're going to explain what's happening. Okay? So, as we begin to heat this, I don't want to burn my hand. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Dominic, come here. Come, come, darling. Come, come. Okay. Do you see little bubbles in there? Confirm. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Why do you think there's bubbles in there? From the water shooting up. Okay. So what's forming the bubbles? The heat. The heat? What is in the bubbles? Air. Air. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Thank you. So what happens... You can sit down. <laughs> I need you to come up for the sake of the camera so they can see you as you observe. Okay. So what happens is water is actually a molecule of hydrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. It looks like this. Okay, it's like a little molecule like that. All right. As you add heat to this, it actually breaks these bonds. Okay. It actually doesn't break those bonds. Sorry. It breaks the bonds between multiple of these molecules. Okay. But when the molecules are not bonded together anymore, they have to escape. Right. That's the bubble. It's actually just molecules that are escaping. Okay? So, why are bubbles coming up out of the water? The heat causes the molecules to break apart and escape. Okay? The heat causes the molecules to break apart and escape. All right? Now, let us see what is the temperature of the water after heating. Um, Ian, come on up. Okay. I'm going to hold this in the water. Don't, you can't touch the bottom, otherwise we'll have result okay but you gotta get kind of eye level with me okay you see the red line going up Seven degrees what? Celsius. Celsius. Perfect. 
that means it would be like 120, right? Something, well, a little more than that. But 87 degrees Celsius. See the bubbles now? Okay, let me see if I can show you guys. You guys see that? Not really. Oh, it like really stopped. No, it did. Ooh, 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 ooh. You see now? No. Little bitty bitty. Okay. So that's what happens as we let those molecules, as we heat them up and the molecules begin to break apart, right? When we add heat, the molecules begin to vibrate, yes? yes. That's what we talked about in our notes, okay? As they begin, once they begin moving fast, 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 eventually they move so fast that they're no, they're no longer stuck together and those molecules begin to escape as a bubble, as a gas, okay? So, number, what are we on, four, five, seven, I don't know. D. Explain what oh it's all foggy now. Explain what you see happening. So in your own words, I want you to describe what you just saw. There's no right or wrong. Okay? You just explain what you saw. Man. Okay. All right, someone tell me what you wrote. Explain what you see happening. What did you say? Hannah? I wrote, um, I saw that the water, the water was evaporating. I saw the water was evaporating. Yeah, you can see the steam in the air right here. Mm -hmm. This is tiny little individual water molecules that have heated up so much they're escaping. Okay? Put your hand over it, it's kind of warm. And then when you kind of take it off, it's like kind of wet. Okay? That's that evaporation. Macy, what'd you write? The act of evaporation. The act of evaporation? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly what you're looking at for sure. Vivian? Um, I said that there were little bubbles popping up. Mm-hmm. And that the water was like vibrating. Yep, very good. Dominic, what'd you put? I saw the water melted and escaping. Perfect. Eric, what'd you write? So, I'm, I'm, so I was. Okay. But, um, but um, I'm going to say, when you have stuffy noses, like at all age, instead of a brother, a brother, and a sister, we have humidifiers in the room, and we have like stuffy noses. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's because the evaporation from the humidifier helps get the mess into your nose, first so of all. Kind of like it's kind of like Correct. That's right. Very good. All right, so the last part. Now we analyze the data and make a conclusion. So we performed our experiment. Now, based on what we observed and the results that we got, what conclusion can we draw? So based on the results of my experiment, I can say that, or I can conclude that, what? How can we finish that statement? Hannah? Um, that water is actually another um, heat. Is it, is it right? Very good. We can say, I can conclude that water evaporates whenever heat is applied. It's a great way to put it. Okay. Another way you could say that is to cause evaporation, you have to add heat. Saying the exact same thing. Okay? Or heat causes evaporation. Or heat causes the molecules to break apart. Heat causes steam. Whatever you want to put. Yes? Or you could say water can evaporate Very good. Very good. 
Anyone know the boiling point of water in degrees Celsius? Ian? I think it's like 100 Delta degrees. Correct. And Fahrenheit is 212. Mm -hmm. And Celsius is 100 degrees. Very good. So we were getting pretty close to that. Hence why it wasn't boiling completely. There were probably sections of the water that had gotten to 100 degrees Celsius. Which is why those were boiling. And then the freezing point is 0 degrees Celsius. And then where we see the very good. All right, going on to part two, okay? The second part we're going to experiment with has to do with condensation, all right? So we just caused evaporation. Now we're going to try to cause condensation, okay? So the question I'm trying to answer is what, Rahelio? What's the question I'm trying to answer? Right here. Just read it. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Form a hypothesis. My hypothesis is condensation formed by whatever you think. So go ahead and fill that out with your own words. You have a question? Okay. Good question. Fahrenheit, the it's kind of like the difference between inches and miles, right? It's just a different measurement, a different unit of measurement. Mm -hmm. So my hypothesis is condensation forms by whatever you think. Identify variables. As I experiment, I will be changing again the temperature of the water. And what I will keep the same is there are a lot of things you're going to keep the same. The same type of water. the same size of the containers, same materials, and we could go on and on, etc. Okay. Now, for the procedure, for the directions, okay? It says you need 24 plastic cups of 250 milliliters. That's the big ones, okay? You don't need 24. We would need 24 if we were all doing our own experiment, but we're not. Um, so that's the bigger ones, okay? Um, one to fill with room temperature water, the other to fill with ice water. Or we're actually going to do warm water and then room temperature water. 24 dome lids. That's what we're going to use these for, okay? 
Then we need a picture of green room temperature water. That's going to be this one. Okay. And then a picture of blue warm water. So I have my water, my warm water here. I'm going to mix this up. Okay. So here's my picture of blue, of warm blue water. We good? All right. Direction says fill one cup with room temperature water, the other cup with hot water. Snap on the lids and then watch the condensation from the steam forms on the lids and the sides of the hot water cup. So I'm going to try to move these to the front so you guys can see. Can you guys see those? Okay. So I'm going to put a lid on the first one. I'm going to put a lid on the second one. Okay. Automatically, what do you see happening? Hannah? Very good. Okay. There's more steam on the blue cup than there is on the green cup, correct? Why? Vivian? Very good. What is creating the steam on the sides? Dominic? Take a guess. You can do it. Okay, I'm going to try and scoop these guys down so they can see. Why is it? What's creating the steam on the sides of the blue? On the sides of the blue container as opposed to the green container? Evaporation. Evaporation? What is it, though? Water molecules? Good. Why are they gathering on the sides of the container? Ian? Um, because there's nowhere to go, so the steam starts to cool down, and all those tiny water molecules start to form together again, and it makes water drop. Very good. Okay. So if there's a cold one, then the warm air touches the cold one, then they condense. Mm-hmm. Good. So we already decided that those water molecules are escaping because they're heated up, correct? When they touch the sides of this container, the air in this room is a lot cooler than the air inside my chamber here. Is that right? Okay. So when the water molecules hit the sides of this container, they begin to cool off. Well, what happens when evaporation cools? We get condensation, right? Okay. Now, if I were to take this off, let's see. Macy, rub your finger on the bottom of that pillow. Is it like wet or dry? It's like wet, right? Rub your hand on the bottom of that. Can you confirm? Yeah. It's wet, right? So it's like, like almost like when you walk outside and it's kind of oh, wet. wet and rainy, right? Okay. Now, is there condensation on this one? Can you see it? Yeah. There is, but there's yeah. not as much, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're still getting some condensation. Still a little bit, right? Okay. So we're still getting some, but not nearly as much as the hot water. Okay. Because obviously the hot water is evaporating more molecules. So on the collect data, why did condensation form on the inside surface of the chamber? Well, we just decided that the heated water molecules Cool off when they hit the sides of the chamber. It's kind of like you know when you're riding in your car in the cold winter time, and all of a sudden you kind of like lean your head up against the window and it's super duper cold. Okay, same thing happens for these water molecules. When they touch the sides of the chamber, the chamber is a lot cooler than that hot water. So they begin to cool off, which is what causes the condensation. Okay. So the heated water molecules cool off when they hit the sides of the chamber. Someone answers question for me. Raise your hand. Why is there condensation on the blue water lid and not on the green water lid? Okay. So let me show you the two... 
chambers real quick. Okay. Why is this one so much foggier than this one? Uh, don't tell me. Ben? Yeah. Uh, it's because the green water container is cooler, so it's not really like evaporating and trying to evaporate. Good. But the blue water container is still trying to always evaporate. Very so good. So it's still has, it's having conversation. Very good. The green water container is cooler, so there is less evaporation. Which we know causes less condensation. Yes, ma'am. The first one or the second one? Uh huh. The green water container is cooler, so there is less evaporation. Okay. Now, after analyze, after getting our all of our data together, we can now analyze it and kind of draw a conclusion based on what we've experimented with, right? Okay, so what does the analyze question say? Based on the results of my experiment, I can conclude that what? We want to answer our question. How does condensation form? Based on what we just did, how can we finish this sentence? So the question was, how does condensation form? Now I can conclude that, Dominic. Um, condensation forms. Okay, so it forms by evaporated mo molecules doing what? What makes them come back together? It's not that there's no space. What did we say caused the condensation inside of this chamber? Well, the heat causes them to escape. What causes them to come back together? It's, it's the opposite. Yes, you do. What's the opposite of heating up? Cooling down. Those those hot water molecules, they're hot, 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 but then when they reach the side, it's like they go, and they kind of cool off. And then they all come back together and form water droplets again. Okay? Condensation forms by evaporated molecules cooling off. That answers the question. All right, last part of this, okay? So part three, we're now in the last section, the water and ice system. Question one, what is the question we're trying to answer here, Ian? On part three, what's the question we're trying to answer? That's number two. What's the question we're trying to answer? What is the question we're trying to answer? Correct. What will happen when I put a cup of ice over hot air? Now, now write your hypothesis. That's what we're going to do. We're going to put a cup of ice over hot air and see what happens. Okay? My hypothesis is, what do you think is going to happen? Fill that in. Okay. Now, number three, oh, identify variables. So everyone's hypothesis should be different. Okay. So this should be your answer to what will happen when I put a cup of ice over hot air. As I experiment, I will be changing whether or not 
the cup has ice above the hot air. Okay. Now, what will I keep the same? I'm going to use the same type of ice all made of water, not salt water or, I don't know, olive oil. They're all going to be water, ice cubes, okay? We're going to keep the type of ice the same, and we're going to keep the size of the cups the same. That's just two examples. Whenever you're performing an experiment, there are always multiple things that you want to keep the same. They're called constant, okay? The more constants you have, the better. So we could go on and on here, but we're just going to stick with these two. Let's squeeze it up a little bit. Now, here's the procedure. Part one, fill larger plastic cups with warm water about a third of the way full. We've already done that with our blue water and our green water. Okay, so I have my warm water here in this chamber, yes? Okay. Fill a smaller plastic cup about half full with crushed ice. So I'm going to use my smaller cup that I was using for the lid. I'm going to take some of this ice here. Put it on top. Ideally, we want crushed ice. Okay, done. Place a smaller cup inside the bigger cup. We've already done that. We're good to go, yes. Number four, watch as condensation forms on the smaller cup holding the ice. Okay, so we're going to let that sit for a second. And I'm going to have someone come up here and confirm that condensation is actually forming. Okay. London, come on up. All right. I'm going to have you. You can come around here. You're good. Okay. Bring your finger on the bottom there and tell me is it still wet? Yes. Very wet? Yes. All right. Good. So we're causing all that hot air that's been heated. We're cooling it off, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Now. I'm going to measure the temperature of the ice cups. Now, now I'm on part two, right? Okay. Measure the temperature of the ice cup. Rahali, look coming up. This is kind of hard because it's not really a solid thing here. All right. What would you say that measurement is? Do you see where the red line is? It's like about 18 or 19. 18 or 19 degrees what? Okay. Perfect. Okay. So let's just write it out to the side right here. 18 degrees Celsius. Now, number six, add two five milliliter spoons of rock salt and stir with a spoon. Here's my salt. It's not rock salt, it's regular salt. Okay. I need two five milliliter scoops. There's a five milliliter. See it right here? Nope. See how it says five mil? Not five million, five milliliter. Okay. We're going to add two scoops of salt here. Does anyone know what happens when you add salt to ice? Gary? It does. So what do you think is going to happen? I need to. What do you think will happen to the condensation on the bottom of this cup? If I can get it much, much colder... All that water that London scooped off with your finger, what's going to happen to it? Hannah? Um, it's, going to cool down. it's going to cool down. And what happens when water cools down to a certain point? Um, it um, if you stick water in the freezer and cool it off, what's going to happen? Um, if you put a bottle in the freezer, what do you think is going to happen? Precipitation? Water's gonna fall from the sky? Girl, what happens when you put a cup of water in the freezer at home? Yes! Exactly! So this condensation on the bottom of my cup right here, if I can get it cold enough, it should freeze. What happens when water freezes? It forms ice. What do we call ice outside? Benjamin? Well, that's snow when it's falling. What do we call it when it's on the ground? Sleet, maybe? Garrick, what do you think? Huh? 
Hey, oh, that's when chunks of ice are falling. Let's pretend we're in January. Could be black ice. Let's pretend we're in January. We walk outside, you step on the grass, and it's crunchy. What do we call that? Hannah? Frost. Let's see if we created some frost here. Not quite yet. We're going to let it sit for just a minute more. Okay. So, oh, yeah, it says measure temperature again. Uh, let's see. Tell me your name, sweetheart, with the glasses. Uh-huh. Macy? Grayson. Grayson, come on up. I'm going to have you measure this temperature for me. It's not scary. All you got to do is read the thermometer. Don't worry. All right. It was 18 degrees Celsius before. What do you think it is now? Is it at zero or is it below zero? Okay. How much How much below do you think? Three, four? Three? All right. So negative three degrees Celsius. So we've gotten our water so cold. Actually, here, let's do that, that looks like a negative 18, and really it was just 18. This is now negative 3. Okay. We're going to let it rest for about two minutes. Now, the ice will continue to, to deposit or set up for about 10 minutes. Okay. We don't have 10 minutes. So, we're going to go ahead and answer the analyzed data in conclusion, make a conclusion. And then I'll show you um, what happens when we're finished. All right. Part one. You can see the steam, fog, and dew on the cup. What are the drops composed of? Where did the water come from? The water on the bottom of this thing, when you squeeze your hand, where did it come from? Ian? Water vapor. Water vapor. Perfect. And then letter B, I don't like that question, so just cross it off. Okay? Now. What happened to cause the ice to form? Let's see if we have ice now. Yeah. Where's London? All right, London. Just lightly touch the bottom of the if we go to now. Is it like ice now? Touch it lightly. Feel it? Believe me? Well, scientifically, it makes sense, right? If we got the water to be below zero degrees, any water on it should freeze, correct? Ice farm. Yeah, more people are alive. Okay, what happened to cause the ice to form? How did we make that stuff on the bottom freeze? Dominic? We, we lowered the temperature to, to below zero degrees. So, based on the results of my experiment, I can conclude that condensation will freeze if made cold enough. So, we just performed the whole water cycle except for precipitation. But if we could cause enough water to kind of gather up on the sides of these containers, and then we would eventually see the drops begin to drip down, right? Because the water gets so heavy, it gets pulled by gravity. That would be precipitation. Then if it gathered up on the bottom, we could heat it up again, cause it to cool, and then let it drip down. That would be the water cycle over and over and over again. Okay? Yes. I don't know. Good question. Um, 
I mean, it couldn't be ice. <laughs> But eventually you could cause your body, I don't know what the temperature is, but if it's too cold, it could cause you to go into hypothermia. And then you eventually... Okay, hold on, Hannah. All right, this paper I need you to put into the labs section of your binder. It should be the last tab of your binder. Oh, okay. Put it behind the labs tab. Then you may pack up your stuff and stand behind your chair.